Hello and welcome to this video playing Vardas Katha. Wow. Vardas Katha Bodrahoma. Wow, that's a handful. Okay, does not play the check on E2. I think this is more, more testing. Okay, this is also okay, of course, what white is doing. But um, I would go queen e2 check if given the chance. Yeah, that, that looks odd, yeah? <laughs> but this is how this opening is played. Queen c2 now is the most interesting choice. Okay. Yeah, I think bishop f5 then, if given the opportunity, I do that. b4 is a little bit odd. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. If you're in shadowing here with white, it's not the most obvious choice. Knight e4, he will take and go d5, I guess. That is actually a little bit... It's not bad, actually. It's not so bad. Okay, so let's do it. Like, just on general terms, I would like to trade minor pieces, the typical anti-IQP strategy. You just have to always check if you're general strategy is also applying to the position that you have and this is uh, very unlikely to be good because two minor pieces traded that should favor me quite substantially so here i'm angling for knight d5 and if he goes pawn to d5 I'll just take it because of the discovered check on h2 so i should be able to put knight d5 put the knight onto d5 next, and then his bishop looks a little bit passive. Knight d5 is almost a pre uh, possible to play as a pre-move. Okay, so knight to d5, uh, knight to e5, I mean, should probably prevent. Not a big problem, but if you can prevent it, it makes sense to do so. Queen to f6, keeping knight e5 out of this position. I wonder if white should go b5. No, that's just the knight's not good now. Oh, he still plays it. Why is that possible? Take, take, rook takes. Hmm. It's got a bit of activity. Yeah, so I still don't believe it. I'm taking a center pawn. I don't see any anything here for white. The knight on d5 is just a rock here, yeah? so covering c7 and c6. I mean, if I get c6, that's very nice. And then the knight is covered, it covers e7, everything's looking very harmonious. I don't see anything concrete that white has here. I really don't. Yeah, so c6. Maybe. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really have a rook move. Yeah. Um, bishop c3 now would. Um, yeah, that forces. Forces the trade. 
I would have liked to keep my knight, but yeah. I would have liked to keep the knight, but it um, wasn't possible. Yeah, white well, should probably go for the rook ending. It's not very attractive to play, but it's um, better than the other scenarios. Mm, it, it looks very good though. For, um, for me. Yeah, just here, right? What is the quickest? The yeah, quickest is not really important. The most convincing way to play. I mean, he cannot move the rook somewhere without dropping the a-pawn. Yeah, rook c3 check now. That's not a big problem. Okay. That's probably when you resign with white. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think he... Um, from here, he started to misplay this position a little bit. Queen, queen c2 is what they normally play in such a position. Um, trying to prevent, if we check this, uh, trying to prevent bishop f5, yeah, cannot do that. And it's important to see that um, white is also eyeing the possibility to play bishop takes h6. For example, if I play rook e8, he will take him. And that is a disaster. <laughs> yeah, black should not do that. Um, yeah, queen c2 is usually the way to go. Yeah, trying to play with this bishop takes h6 idea. Yeah, before. Um, yeah, I mean, the bishop is just not a good piece here. Yeah. It looks at this pawn. Knight e4, I wasn't so certain about. And in fact, the engine uh, strongly dislikes the move because of the capture, hmm, okay. And rook e1, did not think about this all that much. But yeah, yeah, you see what the problem is. Um, if I want to keep this active piece, I need to go here, but that is not really great. Yeah, that is a, that is a nice initiative, huh? here and here, and, yeah. Yeah, that's what he should have done, so. Knight e4 is not so good. I probably should do this. This is the most normal move, maybe. If white is doing something very... Nah, nobody would play that, right? Like this, yeah? I can even take on h3. Hmm? So something, something like this is just not working. It hangs and everything. Yeah, okay, so he had rook e1, but bishop d3 is uh, very comfortable for me now. I can trade two minor pieces, and now I get to d5. He cannot go d5 because I just take it, and there's the discovery. So very comfortable. And now I try to prevent knight e5, and then he played it anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's just a pawn. and. Uh, I should take it. I mean, you should not really panic with white. It's a little bit uncomfortable here um, because you have no activity for the isolated pawn. And what is not really ideal with the bishop on d2, 
you have those two pawns. If white would have the pawn still on b2, a2, I wouldn't even think that this is anything for black because with white you trade down the heavy pieces and you can draw this ending rather comfortably. Um, not much fun, but you should draw it. And um, yeah, here it's a little bit awkward because many endings um, you will have a pretty bad bishop. Yeah, still knight e5 is not called for. It's just, um, yeah, it's panicking and without, without reason. Yeah, maybe queen to f5 is stronger. Just keep the knight. This is, oh, sorry, bishop c3 is a good idea. Just to trade the, the strong knight and then we got we got to the to the ending and um, yeah it is um, it is awkward i have got the more active rook and you have a weakness either on b4 or on a3 and my king is quite quickly approaching i think it's just lost don't, don't see any great defensive resource i think it's just a lost ending it's not much that white can do okay guys thanks for watching